Welcome to today's lesson on how life changed in America during World War II. Up until this point, we've talked a lot about what's going on with American, the American military in the European theater and in the Pacific theater, but we haven't really focused on what's going on here at home in the United States on the home front um, with all those civilians who are working very hard to support the war effort so that our troops have what they need to be successful while they're far away from home fighting the Axis powers. We're going to look at how four groups, how life changed for four groups in America during this time period. First, we're going to look at how life changed for consumers, for women, for African Americans, and then for Japanese Americans. We are going to start off with consumers. Um, as I go through the slides, please fill in your notes in a side-by-side -side screen. And if you have any questions, you can ask me on Monday or the next time that I see you. So first, please answer the question, why did the Great Depression end? American involvement in World War II brought an end to the Great Depression because America now needs war supplies. They need workers, they need factories up and running again, and they need to get busy. They shock the Axis powers with how many things are produced in the United States during this time period. The sheer volume of production for war materials is unseen in the world before. And because American soil remains largely untouched by actual combat, their infrastructure and factories and defense plants and things like that remain intact to be further successful after World War II. Rationing is kind of like having a coupon. You're limiting the amount of goods consumers can buy, so more supplies are available for the war effort. As you can see from this poster here, it says, do with less, so they'll have more. So as a consumer, I'm going to buy a ration book, which is kind of like a coupon book, that's going to allow me to buy four pounds of sugar in the month of March. So I buy my four pounds with my ration coupon, and once I use my coupon, it's done. Okay, it's a, a ration book. It comes with a bunch of little pieces of paper that tell me how much I'm allowed to buy of each good. How much sugar can I buy? How much flour can I buy? How many cans of soup am I allowed to get this month? So people are going to work very hard to conserve and buy less of things so that more supplies are available to support our troops overseas and the war effort in general because we want to beat the Axis powers. As you can see from this next slide, many things were rationed and conserved during the war. On the left, we're talking about scrap rubber. There's scrap rubber drives, scrap metal drives. Kids go through neighborhoods collecting metals and old tires and scrap metal and things like that to turn in to help support making war materials. So as you can see from this flyer on the left, a gas mask requires rubber, a life raft requires rubber, a scout car requires rubber, a heavy bomber requires rubber. So they're encouraging people to recycle and conserve these natural resources. Same thing with metal, going to make guns and um, artillery and things like that. On the right, one thing you might not expect is if you save the fat from cooking bacon or other meats and turn it back into um, a certain place, the, the military and factories are going to use that fat to make explosives. And so many people save their bacon grease and other things like that in order to support the war effort. So this really is an effort the entire country is undertaking. One other thing that consumers do to help their men overseas is that they plant victory gardens in their yards. These are just simple vegetable gardens, but instead of buying carrots and peas and tomatoes and broccoli at the grocery store, now you can grow it in your own yard, thus having more to send to the troops overseas. And instead of having um, to go buy those things in winter, maybe you can and preserve a lot of those vegetables you grew in the summer so that you have them to last throughout the winter and your troops have more food available to eat. These are just a few of the ways that consumers' lives changed in America during World War II. Please take a moment and pause this video to complete the I See, I Think, I Wander on this poster from 
World War II talking to consumers about rationing and conservation. So pause the video for a moment. The next group of people we're going to talk about whose lives changed are women. Thousands of American women took jobs in defense plants during the war. The most famous example and the woman who's in a lot of advertisements, she's the most iconic person that you'll see from this time period, is Rosie the Riveter. Rosie is encouraging women to take the place of men in these factories and put forth all they can to support the war effort. So the men have been called away to fight in the Army and the Navy and the Air Force, etc. overseas, leaving open thousands of factory jobs that need to be filled. And who's going to step in and fill those? Women. So they're going to be working in the factory. I want to play this video for you about a song talking about Rosie the Riveter um, from World War II. She's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie, <laughs> the riveter, keeps a sharp look on the sabotage. Sitting up there on the fuselage, that little friend can do more than a male can do. Rosie, <laughs> the riveter, Rosie's got a boyfriend, Charlie. Charlie, he's a marine. Rosie is protecting Charlie. Working overtime on the riveting machine When they gave her a production knee She was as proud as a girl could be There's something true about red, white, and blue About Rosie, the riveter Although Rosie the Riveter was not a real person, she became an icon of this time period. Now, when the men come back from being in the military and they return to civilian lives, many of these women are forced out of the factory jobs they held during the war. And as you can imagine, eventually that causes some conflict in American culture, which we will get to in an upcoming unit. Please look at the two posters here, read about them, and what can you learn about the impact of World War II on women from these posters, and please type an answer to that question in the box. Pause for as long as you need. The third group of people we're going to talk about whose lives changed during World War II in America are African Americans. First of all, many African American men served in the military. Units are still segregated, so there are all white units and all black units. However, when you're in a tense situation such as war, also a very traumatic situation, some racial barriers are broken down temporary, temporarily, which means there's not as much prejudice or discrimination in actual battle, um, but the units are still segregated. Another situation African Americans are in is working in the factories. Same thing as women. Okay, white men have gone off to war. There's a huge need for workers, which temporarily breaks down racial barriers in the workplace. As you can see from the poster on the side, there's an African-American man and a white man there working together in a factory with the words 
under it, united we win. Okay. So these racial barriers are temporarily broken down during the war, and African Americans can get jobs in factories at a level that they never dreamed of in the pre-World War II world. But discrimination continues to some extent during the war and continues definitely after the war when all of the troops return. Same thing as women. Many of these African American males are forced out of these factory jobs. The final group we're going to discuss today is how life changed in America for Japanese Americans. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, many Americans became concerned about Japanese Americans living on the West Coast. Please keep in mind that many of these Japanese Americans were second and third generation Americans. They were born in America. They were raised in America. They had no connections to Japan. There was never a reason to believe that these Japanese Americans were disloyal. However, simply because they were of Japanese ethnicity, many Americans were nervous about their presence on the West Coast in case of a further Japanese invasion. Many Japanese Americans served in the armed forces. However, others were treated with distrust and prejudice. And because of this, many were sent to live at internment camps for the duration of the war. An internment camp is a prison-like camp where people are held during the war. Many of these were set up in makeshift um, places such as uh, horse racing facilities where whole families would live in the stalls that horses were formerly kept in, or they were sent to live in shacks in the desert in Utah and other places like that. Hundred, more than 100,000 Japanese Americans were forced to give up their farms, homes, and businesses, often selling their furniture and um, washing machines, dryers, things like that, for a few dollars when they paid much more for it. They were forced to give these up because they were being arrested and sent to internment camps. President Franklin Roosevelt issued this order that Japanese Americans on the West Coast were to be forcibly removed and sent to these camps. Again, there was never a reason to believe that these Japanese Americans were not loyal. You can see from this image here that there were many camps located on the West Coast and the Japanese Americans were forced to stay here, surrounded by barbed wire, living in their shacks, guarded all the time for the duration of World War II. In the 1970s, the Japanese Americans who were affected by life in internment camps were compensated monetarily by the United States government. However, it wouldn't make up for the way that the, their citizenship rights had been taken away and their 14th Amendment rights had been violated. So in conclusion, um, many Americans' lives changed during World War II, and when the war is over, many of them have to figure out how to go back to life as it was before the war, and for many that wasn't an option. So please keep in mind how these four groups of people changed during the war. Now follow your teacher's directions on the subsequent slides in this PowerPoint for further activities.